Welcome to EC Hall 442, Study Session 15, Introduction to Game Theory 2. Introduction In this lecture, we shall examine how to solve a simple two-person zero-sum game and also introduce the concept of repeated game. Objective At the end of this lecture, you should be able to apply the minimax and maximum principles in solving a simple two to person zero to sum game you should be able to analyze a simple finitely repeated game a example one solving two to person zero to sum game there are two frames a and b in an area which for a long period in the past have been selling a competing product and are now engaged in struggle for a large share of the market. Now, until the total market of a given size, any share of the market gained by one firm must be lost by the other. Let us assume that both firms are considering the same three strategies in a bid to gain the share in the market. The three strategies are as follows. 1. Low advertising 2 high advertising and three quality improvement we also assume that currently they are sharing the market equally and that each of the firms can employ only one of the strategies at a time depending on the strategies of each players the payoff net gain or loss to firm a is as follows a positive payoff indicates that the firm A has gained the market share at the expense of firm B. One negative payoffs imply B's gain at A's expense. Determine the best strategy for A using a maximum criterion and explain the logic of the solution. Determine the best strategy for B using the minimax criterion. B. Solution 1 since maximum is maximum of the minimum, you first add a column of minimum value corresponding to A strategy to the payoff of firm A and then choose the maximum value in the column as follows. Thus, the best strategy for A is A2. Explanation For firm A to be conservative, he would assume that the other firm would choose a strategy that would make him worst, no matter the strategy he chooses. For example, if firm A employs strategy H1, it would expect firm B to choose B2, thereby reducing A's payoff from strategy A1 to its minimum value equal to minus 8, representing a loss to firm A. If firm A employs strategy A2, it would assume that firm B would employ strategy B3. That would give A a 3% increase in market share. And if firm A employs strategy A3, it would expect that firm B would employ B1, which put the firm to the loss of 10 points. Firm A would like to make the best use of the situation by choosing the maximum of the minimum payoffs. Thus, firm A gains 3% of the market while firm B loses 3% of the market. To use minimax criterion, you will add row of maximum value corresponding to B's strategy and thus select the minimum value. The best strategy for B is B3.
with a strategy x equals to a22 minus a21 over bracket a11 minus a22 minus bracket a12 minus a21 y equals to a22 minus a12 over bracket a11 minus a22 minus bracket a12 minus a21 v equals to a11 a22 minus a12 a21 over bracket a11 minus a22 minus bracket a12 minus a21 d example 2 consider the following pair of matrix of a game between a and b and determine the optimal strategies for the players and determine the value of the game you will notice that minimum and maximum method is not applicable to this problem to so apply the formula a11 equals to 8 a12 equals to minus 7 a21 equals to minus 6 a22 equals to 4 thus we have x equals to 4 minus bracket minus 6 over bracket 8 plus 4 minus bracket minus 7 minus 6 equals to 10 over 25 equals to 2 over 5 y equals to 4 minus bracket minus 7 over bracket 8 plus 4 minus bracket minus 7 minus 6 equals to 11 over 26 v equals to 8 bracket 4 minus bracket minus 7 bracket minus 6 over bracket 8 plus 4 minus bracket minus 7 minus 6 equals to minus 10 over 25 equals to minus 2 over 5 thus mean strategies for a is to use a1 with probability 2 divided by 5 and a2 with probability 3 divided by 5 brackets 1 minus 2 divided by 5 the optimal strategy for b is to use b1 and b2 in the ratio 11 divided by 25 ratio 14 divided by 25 the value of the game is a net loss of 2 divided by 5 to a and a net gain of 2 divided by 5 for b f finitely repeated games this is a game where a particular smaller game is repeated the small game is called the stage game the stage game is repeated regardless of what has been played in the previous games in this analysis we assume that the game is repeated finitely many times and at the beginning of each repetition each player records what each player has played in each previous play Consider the following entering deterrence game where an entrant 1 decides whether to enter a market or not and the incumbent 2 decide whether to fight or accommodate the entrant if he enters. Consider the game where this entry deterrence game is repeated twice and all the previous actions are observed as in that a player simply cares about the sum of his payoffs at the stage games the game is depicted in the following figure note that after the each outcome of the first play the entry deterrence game is played again where the payoff from the first play is added to each outcome since a player's preferences do not change when we add a number to his utility function each of the three games played on the second round is the same as the stage game. The stage game has a unique sub-game perfect equilibrium where the incumbent accommodates the entrant and anticipating this, the entrant enters the market. In that case, each of the three games played on the second round has only this equilibrium as a sub-game perfect equilibrium. This is depicted in the following figure. Using backward induction, we therefore reduce the game to the following. Notice that we simply added the unique subgame perfect equilibrium payoff of 1 
from the second round to each payoff in the stage game. Again, adding a constant to a player's payoffs does not change the game, and hence, the reduced game possesses the subgame perfect equilibrium of the stage game as its unique subgame perfect equilibrium. This can be generalized, that is, given any finitely repeated game with observable actions, if the stage game has a unique subgame perfect equilibrium, then the repeated game has a unique subgame perfect equilibrium, where the subgame perfect equilibrium of the stage game is player at each round. Summary To solve a two person zero sum game, you can apply the principle of minimax and maximum by determining the minimum payoff value for each row and also the maximum payoff value for each of the columns. If the maximum value is equal to the minimum value, the point of equilibrium is referred to as the saddle point. If there is no saddle point in a 2x2 game matrix, then the optimum strategy would be a mixed strategy and you can obtain the probability of each strategy for each player as well as the value of the game using formula. In a finitely repeated game, we assume that the game is repeated finitely many times. And at the beginning of each repetition, each player records what each player has played in each previous play. And given any finitely repeated game with observable actions, if the stage game has a unique subgame perfect equilibrium, then the repeated game has a unique subgame perfect equilibrium, where the subgame perfect equilibrium of the stage game is player at each round. End of study session 15 and end of ECO 442. Thanks for listening.